He ruled the heavyweight division for seven years and fought and beat the best, including Ken Norton, Ernie Shavers, Mike Weaver and, of course, Muhammad Ali. So when Larry Holmes visited Bristol this week, he was just the latest member of boxing royalty to have his fist modelled in Bristol blue glass as a unique souvenir of his illustrious career. Yes, I did have a lot of royalty, but I tell you what, being here, seeing what I did see, it's amazing. Because, you know, I, what I've seen, I've seen on television. I've never seen it live in person. So it gives me great feeling, great pleasure to be here to see what and how they do this. Yeah. So uh, you admire the skill there, but the skills you had in the ring, you were, you were, well, you're a Hall of Famer, aren't you? So you, you must be really proud of the career you had. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. You know, 38 years of boxing, you know, with, um, you know, 75 fights, 69 wins, 44 knockouts, you know, and people said I couldn't do it, and I just showed them that I can do it. You know, it's amazing how you can do what you want to do if you really work hard at it and really try to do it. You can accomplish practically anything that you want to accomplish. You had too many great fights for me to be able to ask you about all of them, but tell us about the fight against Ken Norton, for first of all. Ken Norton was toe to toe, hard fight. He didn't like me at all. He would just won the title, and I was trying to get that championship, and we fought for 15 rounds, something that the fighters don't do today. They don't fight 15 rounds. You know, and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great one point win for Larry Holmes that I never, never, never forget. And I, they say that it was level on the scorecards after 14, is that right? They say it was level, you know, even one point, I won by one point, but guess what? I won. Exactly, that's what set you apart from others. You were a winner, weren't you? You weren't going to let people beat you unless they put in something really superhuman. Well, a lot of dedication to sacrifice, and that's what I did. You know, you have to do that if you want to win. You want to be champion, stay champion. That's what you got to do. It's a lot of people become a champion, but they don't have to keep the title for long for a long period of time. I kept it for seven and a half years. You certainly did. Now, obviously, the other fight I need to ask you about is against Muhammad Ali, who, of course, we sadly lost earlier this year. Um, it was a great fight for you, but you, there was a sadness yeah. about it for you it as well. It was a sad fight for me too, you know, it was a good fight, but it was a sad fight because I knew Muhammad, I knew him, how he would fight, how he worked, because I did, I was his sparring partner for like four years. I was around him all those years and I seen how he do. And you know, he was not fit, I don't think, to fight me. He, may, he had it in his mind that he can do it, that he can overcome it, things like he 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 done that so many times before. But, you know, when he got in the ring with me, he fell and he had to know that he couldn't overcome it. So he meant mainly, he didn't quit because he would never quit. And, and if the referee wouldn't stop it, he'd have went the distance. But this is the question for all boxers, isn't it? Knowing when to retire. I, I'm sure you regret the fact that he, you maybe even fought him that he hadn't retired before then. Yeah, you know, you know I'm glad that he, he, you know, that he didn't get hurt doing what he did. And, you know, even myself, you know, like I, I fought until I was 52 years old. And, you know, that's unheard of. And a lot of fighters now are trying to do the same thing that I did. But you got to be very careful. You got to know your game. And if you can't do your game, you should get out before you get hurt. Yeah, absolutely. So bring it right up to date in the current heavyweight scene. We've, we've obviously seen the Tyson Fury uh, having to relinquish the belts because of his health problems, mental health problems right. maybe. Uh, we've seen the Klitschko's dominate for years. We've now got Anthony Joshua here who's hopefully the big hope for, for us for right. long term. Where do you see the heavyweight division at the moment? I think the heavyweight division need help because those guys are not fighting. They're not fighting each other. To keep the heavyweight system going, you need to fight. You need to fight each other. You need to bear down to one person, one champion. That's what I did. Fight everybody, you know. Don't fight just because you're going to make a few dollars. Fight because you really want to be the heavyweight champion of the world. You really want people to respect you as such a heavyweight champion. And people are not giving none of those guys any respect. You know, they just we talk talking about them like we're doing now, but none of them that we're going to say, He's the real champ. We can't say that. Who do you think is the best heavyweight around at the moment? I think that Josh Boyd probably is the best. He got the best boxing style, but uh, you know, again, you know, you never know that that boxing style might not get him or let him take those punches. You know what I mean? 
you might get back real good, but can he take a shot? He never got hit now, nobody really knows. And you know, the Crisco brothers are supposed to be able to hit. So uh, we just have to wait and see. Well, it's a real pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. You're a knockout. Thank you.